John 10.26 Quem pater sanctificavit et misit in mundum, vos dicitis quia blasphemas, quia dixi, filius deisum. What about him who the Father made holy and sent into the world? Do you say that you blaspheme because I said I am the Son of God? Now, what do we have here? First, you may notice that I translated a little bit freely according to sense rather than the strict wording, because if we translate according to the strict wording in this case, it will not make any sense. Now, grammatically, when we look at the passage as a whole, we have to remember that this is the apotesis of the prior verse. So this is answering the if side of the question. The if there is something, then the apotesis, which is what our verse here is today. And it starts off with a relative clause within which we have our two perfect tense verbs. And this clause, independent of anything else, simply means whom the Father made holy and sent into the world. Then we have, you say that you blaspheme. Now, normatively, we would expect this to look a little bit different. We'd be more waiting for an infinitive construction. Dicitis me blasphemare. You say me to blaspheme, or you say that I'm blaspheming. However, we'd actually, with this kind of construction that we have here in the whole sentence, we probably expect me to front quem. So me, quem, so me, whom the, the Father sent in the world, you say to blaspheme. But instead we have quia in place of quod. Then we have the open quotation of blaspemas, you blaspheme. Second person singular indicative. Lastly, we have this little subordinate clause. This clause offers the reason as to why they're accusing him of blasphemy. Because I said that I am the son of God. Now we would expect dixi in this case to be dixerim. Because when quia introduces a causal clause within indirect discourse, we would expect to see the subjunctive in the verb that follows it. And that verb would follow the sequence of tenses accordingly.